Ladies and gentlemen, now, I want to ask you a question before we proceed. What do you see as the outcome? I want to see your projections on what you are going to see coming out from the bipartisan talk because William Ruto has released um, his machinery from the Kenya Kwanzaa team. And I was looking at that team and I've noted some key important areas. And I also listened to how they, they actually met because they met uh, uh, in State House today to avail this team. And from what I noted in the first place, you know, William Ruto came up with a countermeasure which nobody expected. And so this team is expected to strictly deliver what is from the mouth of Kenya Kwanzaa. They're not going for nego negotiation. I, I don't see them going for negotiation, but they are going to exactly do whatever they are told, you know, from the boss, right? And they are going to be what we call in Swahili, um, they're going to be under the pressings of Ubarakala. So Ubarakala means, you know, when your boss tells you, do this, you stick to it. You don't have room for expressing your opinion, expressing your intention, expressing your free will. So this team is moving with no free will and no autonomy within the, you know, the democratic uh, pressings of negotiation for a better country. And that is actually why he brought people that we never expected. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to look, I want us to compare notes for this analysis. I want us just to look at what is exactly is going to come out. Are we going to have a deadlock? Are we going to have an impasse to the extent that, you know, the last resort would be Raila to be um, actually angered by the progress of the talks and the outcome generally to the extent that his last resort will be going back to the streets. I just want us to compare notes and, and have a moment of looking at this, especially now that uh, things are rolling and, and, and the motion is, is now set. So ladies and gentlemen, in the event you're coming to the channel for the first time, take a second and uh, give this video a thumbs up. And thank you so much. You know, the videos are doing so well and, and, and I know um, we are going ahead. So make sure you subscribe. And the only way you can actually support is to give the video a thumbs up. Just give it a thumbs up. Actually, I gave out my number for WhatsApp. <laughs> There's a number that I use for WhatsApp different um, um, from the personal one. So that is strictly for WhatsApp. Look at the description. You will see it. If you want to uh, maybe alert me on anything that is uh, related to you know what we discuss, the analysis and, and any update, I think you can use that. And let me start by mentioning... Uh, the team from Kenya Kwanzaa. So they have picked Boni Halwale to head the team. Of course, they are, um, uh, we have also George Muragar. We also have Esther Kinyuri, Lydia Haika, Helen Sjio, Eden Kainan. Among them, you can only maybe say Boni Halwale is, 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 is a very a staunch debater, <laughs> you know, and, and, and a stern one for that matter in terms of you know, kind of backing his his political alienation. And also you can also talk of um, Aden Kenan. Aden Kenan is also well known to be a very diehard of Ruto's ideology and, and whatever Ruto um, actually leans upon, he takes it uh, very well. Now I want us to look at the instructions they have been given. And these instructions are the instructions that are going to inform us on whether we are going to have a successful bipartisan talk or not. And in comparison, that is why I was telling you that, you know, Ruto sat down and cleverly identified how Azimio presented uh, their team. And, and there are very many um, contrasting points. You can differentiate, you can, you can compare and contrast. So, number one... <laughs> They have been told to strictly measure the negotiation on parliamentary process. Kenya Kwanzaa is against any coalition between William Ruto and Raila Molodinga. And so this instruction is to make this team, these leaders who are actually forming this team, not to think of anything 
beyond the parliamentary process. So they have been tuned in their minds to only stick to the parliamentary process. The item which I presented that, you know, the negotiation can take the form of, you know, the coffee announce, you know, two or two, two or seven to eight, you know, that is what they don't want. Because when, when they deviate to that, it would mean they are talking of a totally different thing that will lead the outcome uh, to having power being shared. And there is nothing that Kenya Kwanza hates as sharing power right now with Raila Morodinga. And that is why the first instruction or the first <laughs> um, um, establishment that they have been established in uh, for this talk is to ensure that strictly they remain within the purview of parliamentary process. Then they were also told to reject the return of subsidy. And this is, this is kind of a bone of contention. And I see Raila Odinga are going to major on, on, on this. And this can be used as a good political tool to fight the Kenya Kwanza. Because look, Kenya Kwanza is telling the team that when Raila demanded that the return of subsidy be considered in the talks, and it must be considered in order to lower the cost of living. And then we are seeing William Bruto uh, actually instructing the team not to accept this. What are, you, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I know your thought is as good as mine. This can be a political tool. If things go to a deadlock, if we have an impasse to, a, to an extent that you know, we return to the streets, this can be used as a political tool to sensitize Kenyans on how Ruto neglected the move to lowering the cost of living. Because the return of subsidies will actually lower the cost of living, um, uh, maybe uh, cater for some aspects of the economy that will ease the burden that the people are actually seeing. And so what does that tell you, even from the Kenya Kwanza itself? There is a change in the narrative. There is a change in the goal. You know, the bulls are that we able to focus on as a cost of living to improve the lives of the hustlers. Ruto is no longer thinking of the hustlers. This man is, you know, is kind of out of context of the hustler government, hustler nation, right? So this is a political tool that can be banked on by Azimio and they can really use it strategically to position themselves even as they go for this nego negotiation and, and make sure that people know the exact true nature of the government that we have. Then they, also, they were also told to not allow a reconstitution of the IABC. And when I was listening to how they were speaking, you know, the matters of IABC, the Kenya Kwanza was saying that, you know, those four IABCs left at their own will. They resigned at their own will. And they are actually telling Azimio that if you want the reconstitution of the IABC, you go to Supreme Court. <laughs> So that you know, Supreme Court interprets it well because the Supreme Court actually made a decision based on the petition that Azimio filed. You know, so if if the team is supposed to go and talk about anything to deal with the IBC, their stand is no reconstitution of the IBC. The structure remains the same. The the, the officials who resigned and left, you know, they did it at their will. So meaning they are kind of eliminating the aspect of reconstitution of IABC. And one of the things that Raila actually is majoring on is the aspect of looking at how IABC dealt with the election and what led to everything that culminated into even this IBC officials resigning. So that is another hard stand that they have taken. And their position is if Azimio wants the IABC to be reconstituted or reconstructed, then definitely they have to approach Supreme Court. So they are actually are disintegrating themselves from the demand of looking at the structure of IBC, going into the institution and maybe trying to go deeper into how they functioned uh, for, for, for that election. Then they were also told not to entertain any <laughs> discussion on electoral reforms. Now, you, you know what caused all these mayhems and, and, and all these halabaloos, what we are seeing? Uh, where we have found ourselves, it's because of the electoral injustices in the first place. Very many pundits, very many analysts have actually said it. And if we don't deal with the electoral reforms, we will continue to see what we are seeing every electioneering period. So if Kenya Kwanzaa is strict on not touching on the electoral reforms, what are we going to discuss to better our nation going further? 
What are we going to discuss to better our electoral system? What are we going to discuss to make sure that, you know, in future, because, you know, politics is dynamic. You know, today you are in this camp, you are in the government, but a term is ending. What if you find yourself in uh, the other side of, of, of the road, you know? It will face you. What is good for the goose is always good for the gander. But is it time for us not to um, uh, bring in every electioneering period that what is good for the goose is good for the gander? Can we have a common framework where we deal with things at once? And this is very contentious because if the electoral reforms are looked at, it will go back to constitutional amendment. It will dig deeper into how are we seeing the IBC functioning. It will also dig deeper into the nitty gritties in the IBC. It might even end up, you know, talking about the issues to deal with the summer and how the elections have been carried upon. It might also go to an extent of bringing in the aspect of Raila's idea of forensic audit of the IBC in its entirety and revealing the matters. So this is a strategic counter. And these people that have been brought on board are very streamlined. They have been told, you must stick to whatever we have told you to do. And, and, and that is why they were, they were not just to present people who um, are known and, 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 and are obvious debaters. They were to bring people who, for example, and in the first place, were given political hand <laughs> to clinch every seat that they had or there have been a, a group of people who are shown mercy in the political campaigns and even in the government so if you know you are being shown mercy and you are told this is what you have to do you have to stick to that you have to be enslaved by that and i think and i believe that that is exactly what william Ruto thought and the kenya kwanza thought to bring these people on board so finally for me, I see that um, we are not going to have a common ground that is going to better our nation. I tell you for free, some of the leaders in Azimio are afraid to always accompany Raila in the Manamano. Otherwise, they are only doing it because they don't have any other solution. So if the government brings them a bait at this time, I see things might not be for the people and things will always remain within the political angle. I don't know what you think. What do you have? <laughs> How do you see this? And, and just tell me what you have from your side. And um, if you have watched this video after this far, please make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up and you can share. You can also invite your friends to like the channel so that we continue more and more. It's been time and we are still moving on. So may you have a great time.